there are four capacitors C1, C2, C3, C4 connected to 300 volt potential difference. So, first part obtain equivalent capacitance of the network, then find the charge and voltage across each capacitor. Finding the equivalent network. We have to find out whether the capacitors are in series or parallel. Uh, the best way is to redraw small parts of the network where they are in series or parallel into one single capacitor replacing the two. In, in this circuit, to identify series combination, the capacitor is connected without any branching. If the same charge flows through two capacitors, that means there is no option for the charge to divide. If the capacitors are connected without any branching, they are in series. So here C2 and C3 are in series. So we can replace C2 and C3 and introduce a single capacitor which can produce the effective capacitance of 2 and 3. So replace C2 and C3 bring C23. C23 is the effective capacitance of 200 and 200 picofarad between these two points. If you remove these two, one single capacitor will come between uh, these two terminals instead of C2 and C3. That's what replacing different parts of the circuit where you feel series or parallel. If they are, if they are series, replace those two by a single capacitor. If they are parallel, replace those two by a single capacitor. Here C2 and C3 are in series because there is no branching, same charge flows through both. So C2 and C3 can be replaced by a single capacitor C2 and C3. We can even calculate the value for series. The rule is 1 by C equal to 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2. Since they are identical, it will be 1 by C1 plus 1 by C1, 2 by C1. So reciprocal C1 by 2. Or generally in series, if the capacitors are identical, the effective capacitance will be value of any one of the capacitors divided by the number of capacitors. So 200 picofarad divided by there are two capacitors, 200 by 200 picofarad. Even you do by 1 by 200 plus 1 by 200, you become 2 by 200, reciprocal will be 100 itself. So you can replace this to be a single capacitor with 100 picofarad. So the new diagram. So these two capacitors gone, a single capacitor came as C23, that is 100 picofarad. Now for identifying parallel combination, like series combination we discussed, there is no branching, charge should be same. In parallel combination, they must be having common initial terminals and common final terminals. So these two, C1 and C23 are starting from here, C1 and C23 are ending from here. So this is a common mistake, after this step, normally Students will take these three capacitors to be in parallel by seeing they are parallel lines and three terminals together and all the three terminals together. But that is not correct because the left side there are three terminals together, right side C1 and C2, 3 are together to this point, uh, C4 and C1, C2, 3, this is cell. So for capacitors to be parallel, there should be common terminal on one side, left side and common terminal other side without any device like resistor, cell, nothing in between, only capacitor. Since there is a cell between C4 and the common point of C1 and C23, C4 is not in parallel with C1, C23 because this is a cell. If the cell was not here and this line was connected, you could have taken C1, C2 and C4 to be parallel. That is a common mistake. 
so common initial terminal common final terminal without any device in between so here we can't go for all the three we can only go for these two c1 and c2 three are in parallel because common initial terminal common final terminal now same like this we can replace these two capacitors by single capacitor or in parallel combination c is c1 plus c2 if they are identical to c1 n capacitors identical n times of c1 so c2 3 and c1 are in parallel the total capacitance will be 2 into 100 200 picofarad so we can replace these two by single capacitor between their common initial point and common final point so draw the new diagram this 200 picofarad is the replacement for these two 100 and 100 c1 and c23 with the c123 now if you analyze this diagram it's very clear this is a circuit without any branching whatever charge flowing through c123 will be same that flowing through c4 also that means actually c123 and c4 are in series in one single circuit without any branching all the devices are in series now these two can be replaced by single capacitor 200 200 series already we have done or c by n since they are identical so 200 by 2 will be 100 this 2 will go a single capacitor will come between 300 plus and minus s1 100 picofarad c1234 so c1234 is a replacement for all these capacitors the value is 100 picofarad now we got the effective capacitance the effective capacitance of the network is 100 picofarad uh, we are supposed to find charge and voltage across each capacitor since it is a single capacitor we can find the total charge total charge through C1234 or Q equal to CV so Q of 1234 will be C1234 into V C1234 is 100 picofarad picofarad you to convert so far we didn't convert because we are only dealing with capacitors, same same units, and also will be in same unit, picofarad. Now we are dealing with two different quantities, so we have to convert into SI unit. So 100 picofarad will be 100 into 10 to minus 12, and the voltage is 300. So 2 zeros, 2 zeros, 4, minus 12, so minus 8. So 3 into 10 to minus 8, Coulomb will be the total charge drawn from the cell that is stored in the effective capacitance, which is C1234. Now the way to look back from this combination is C1234 is actually a series combination of C123 and C4. So if two capacitors are in series, the charge across these two capacitors will be same. Not even the two capacitors, the effective combination, equivalent capacitor also will have the same charge as the individual capacitors. I'll repeat in series combination, the individual capacitors and even the effective capacitance will have the same charge. Means Q123 is same as Q4, which is same as Q1234, what you got here. CD, the charge will be same to this Q4 and Q123 which will be same as the effective capacitance also. So Q1234 equal to Q123 equal to Q4 that already we calculated as Q1234 as 3 into 10 to minus 8. So now you got charge across the fourth capacitor. If you have capacitance and charge you can simply find the voltage using the formula V equal to Q by C. So V4 will be Q4 by C4, Q4 is already 3 into 10 to minus 8. Uh, C4 is 200 into 10 to minus 12. So if you calculate that, uh, these minus 8 and these two zeros minus 10 will go up as plus 10. Minus 8, 10 plus 10 plus 2, 300, 300 by 2 will be 150 volt. The potential difference across C4 will be 150 volt. Charge across that capacity. 3 into 10 to minus 6. So that capacity is completely solved. So this is an important point. If two capacitors are in 
or series combination the charge across those two capacitors and even for the effective combina combination will be the same now this is all we are looking back to this or uh, 1 2 3 we can find v123 by using the same formula v123 will be q123 by uh, c123 so q123 we already have here even c123 also we already have here so substituting that uh, v123 equal to q123 by c123 q123 is calculated as Q123 is calculated as 3 into 10 is minus 8 by C123 200 pico pi. So again the same calculation exactly it will come 150 volts. That's by luck. So these two capacitors are same value then same charge and same voltage. So the voltage across 1, 2, 3 also will be 150 volt. But it's not a single capacitor. 1, 2, 3 is actually a combination of C1 and C2. Now if you look back similar to the series C1 and C23 are parallel to make C123 in parallel combination voltage remains same that means the voltage across individual capacitors which is V1 and V23 will be same as the voltage across the combination of these two capacitors in parallel that means V123 voltage across 1, 2, 3 will be same as voltage across V uh, C1 and voltage across V23. So V1 equal to V23 equal to V123. It already we calculated as uh, V123 we already calculated as 150 volt. So you got voltage of C1, you got voltage of C23, but this is a combination, but this is solved now. If you got uh, V1, then you can find Q1 as simply C1 in the V. Even C23 you can find as uh, C2, Q23 you can find as C23 into V23. V23 is 150 uh, volt and C23 is C23 100 picofarad. So 100 into 10 to the minus 12 in 150. So 10 to the minus 12, two zeros will go minus 10. If you take two more zeros from here and make 1.5, it will be 10 to the minus 8. Uh, exact same calculation works for C1 also. C1 is charge on C1 is Q1 equal to C1 into V1. Uh, C1 already we have 100 picofarad and the voltage of V1 we calculate 150. These two are again same because the capacitances are same. The other questions, the uh, capacitance may be different, the charge may be different, even voltage is Voltage is same because we are parallel combination. So everything is solved regarding Q1. We got V1 and Q1. Now what is left is C2 and C3. If you look back C23, C23 is actually series combination of C2 and C3. Now that means in series combination, the each individual capacitor C2 and C3 and the effective capacitor will have the same charge. That means Q23 will be same as C2 and C3. So Q23 already we calculated here 1.5 into 10 to minus 8 that will be same as Q2 and C3. Now we get Q2 and Q3 simply you can find V2 and V3. This in the formula V equal to Q by C. So V2 will be Q2 by C2, V3 will be Q3 by C3. We have the charge, the capacitance is already given here. So V2 will be Q2 by C2, Q2 is 1.5 into 10 to the minus 8, C2 will be 200 into 10 to the minus 12, so this 2 0 minus 10, so minus 8 plus 10, so 150 by 2 will be 75. Now the same calculation for V3 also because the value is in the same. So the effective capacitance of the combination is Equivalent capacitance combination is 100 picofarad. That's one question. Then they want charge and potential difference across each capacitor. Charge across fourth capacitor, voltage across fourth capacitor. 
now voltage across first capacitor then charge across first capacitor so fourth one first one now 2 mc charge across second and third capacitor given potential difference across second and third capacitor now the basic rule when you come back from a series to the individual capacitors the rule is if two capacitors are in series the charge across each individual capacitor will be same as that of the effective capacitors if two capacitors are in series charge across each capacitor and even the charge across the equivalent capacitor data see this is for a series combination is an important rule for parallel combination it's a potential difference two capacitors are in parallel the potential difference potential difference for the voltage across each capacitor and even the potential difference for the voltage across the equivalent capacitor division so these two rules will help us to solve the entire circuit from the effective network so mathematically speaking q1 equal to Q2 equal to Q12 in series combination. B1 equal to V2 will be equal to V12 in parallel combination.